Hi there, what I have for you today is a one string cigar box guitar with a diatonic neck and uh, you might say what on earth can you do with just one string and hopefully I'm going to surprise you. Um, just before I do that I'm just going to tell you about the notes that you can get on the guitar. Uh, this is a D string, a nickel wound electric D string which I found works the best on this kind of guitar but I've tuned it up to G. It will go up to that pitch because it's only a short scale. The notes on this guitar from lowest to highest are as follows. The open string is a G, the first fret gives you an A, the second fret gives you a B, the third fret gives you a C, the fourth fret gives you a D, the fifth fret gives you an E, and the sixth fret gives you not F sharp but F. So it's obviously not in the scale of G, you're expecting the, um, the F to be sharpened, but that F note, that kind of um, flattened seventh is quite useful uh, and we'll come to that when I do a few more tutorials. So you've got F there on the 6th fret, you've got F sharp on the 7th fret which is the sort of true 7th of the scale and then on the 8th fret you've got the octave G and then it just repeats again A, B, C, D, E, that funny F note F sharp and that's my top note. Some of these guitars you get a full two octaves, this one's just slightly shy of that but it's not really a problem at all. So those are the notes that you can find on this guitar and I'm going to do a separate video about modes because this is a great way of learning the different modes. If you're not sure what that is well check out my other video. I haven't done it yet at the time of doing this video but uh, if this is a few weeks afterwards then it will be up and hopefully you'll find that quite interesting. For most of my working life I've been a guitar teacher in schools and done loads of uh, private lessons as well. And the more I play this funny little guitar the more convinced I am that this would be a great um, instrument for a young child to learn. Or an adult, come to that. Um, why do I say that? First of all this instrument is really light, very very lightweight. I can remember seven years old getting my first guitar which is only a three quarter size um, classical guitar. But I can remember, you know, laying on the carpet with this thing on top of me, really struggling with it. Um, even a five or six year old child would have any problem holding this guitar up. So very, very lightweight. Um, and it's cheap. I mean, I paid about £20 plus postage for this, um, which isn't bad, is it, when you consider the work involved. It's got a beautiful neck, two-piece neck, you've got the fingerboard, and the separate piece of wood for the neck. Um, obviously the cigar box has got to be um, bought by the person who makes it. So once you've got the guitar, normally uh, if you want to stand up and play you need a strap. Well, as you can see I've used a piece of string for this. I've just made a very simple sling around the back of the, the guitar and tied it to the, the, um, the headstock here. And it's fine, it's such a lightweight instrument a piece of string is really all you need. How long that piece of string is going to last, I'm not sure. But it, you know, it's certainly fine for the moment. A really cheap solution to a strap, isn't it? Like I said, this string can be tuned up or down. Um, I'm using a nickel wound electric D string, which I found worked the best on this guitar. Um, I've got it tuned up to G, which is not a problem on this short scale. And I could tune it down from that to D or whatever I wanted. So if I wanted something specifically in a, like a weird key like C sharp, just tune the string to that and there you are, you've got your, your key. There's only one string to worry about. Because there's only one string, of course, uh, and the action is pretty good, it's very easy to press the string down behind the fret. So for a child, that would be lovely. They haven't got the, the pain involved in trying to press uh, a string or multiple strings down on a guitar that's got a very, very poor action very very hard for a young child. Uh, I don't think any child would have any problem pressing this string down and making the required note. I'm using a plectrum to play this string but I could use my uh, finger in a sort of classical guitar, I could use two fingers or I could use my thumb. Um, I use a plectrum because you get a, a bit of a, a nicer tone, a bit of a snappier, um, toppier tone so a plectrum is fine but you know, if anyone wasn't comfortable using a plectrum, finger or thumb would be fine as well. This instrument is really quiet. I mean, it's a small box. Uh, sometimes these come with a tin as the body, and they're called a kanjo. 
Uh, and again, pretty quiet, probably a bit of a tinnier sound, pardon the pun, but I'm sure that's right. I haven't actually got one yet, but I have ordered a few just to see what they're like. It's got a little hole made in it here as a sound hole. Um, I mean, it's pretty basic if you think about it. A cigar box, a nut and bolt for the bridge. Um, it's got a proper nut up here with a groove cut in it and a single machine head, but it's pretty basic. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't make it myself, but if you, know, if you were fairly handy, you wouldn't have much trouble um, making one of these yourself. The, the, the main problem is the neck, you know, putting the frets in the neck, getting it really accurate and finishing it off. As I say, this is beautifully done. And it's one of the things that really attracted me to this guitar. So it's a very quiet instrument. It's not going to disturb the neighbours. Not going to get on the, the nerves of parents or brothers and sisters. You know, a child could sit in his or her bedroom and play uh, without annoying people. You know, and of course they could come out and entertain the whole family. Of course all the notes are laid out in a linear fashion, you know, along the string. Um, you know, when you're learning guitar, one of the problems, of course, is that you've got um, duplicate notes on several strings. In other words, you can find the same note on several strings. It's very confusing to a child, sometimes to an adult. Uh, this, you can clearly see how the notes are laid out. You can clearly see if the note is jumping up a tone like that, or a semitone like that. You see, so it's, it's very simple and quite intuitive when you're trying to figure out a tune. You don't need to read music to play this instrument, although, having said that, um, it's probably not a bad idea uh, if you're going to teach this to teach the person to read um, the treble clef and maybe put the numbers of the frets underneath. That's what I've done on my piece of music, which I'll make available. I've done When the Saints Go Marching In, which just uses the first four frets. And I have written that out in musical notation, but I've also added, like I say, the, the numbers underneath. So, you know, you can see uh, where the notes are found on the guitar. I've also put the lyrics in to make it really, really easy. But I don't think it's ever a bad idea to learn to read music. Years ago, I perhaps wouldn't have said that, but these days, there's nothing really to beat proper music, is the truth. Uh, and for a, a one-string instrument like this, uh, it's a bit of a no-brainer, really. So if you can, learn to read music. If you can't, then just use a simple number code. It's really simple, isn't it? Going back to the subject of chords, it's my experience, uh, which is you know a lot, obviously, 40-odd years of teaching in schools. It's my experience that children these days prefer to play a tune. They really struggle to strum chords and sing. I mean, most uh, cheap guitars that children bring to the schools where I work, you know, the action's pretty hard, and it's unless it's a one-finger chord, uh, it's quite hard to hold the chords down, strum and sing. Uh, if a child can play a tune, a simple tune they know, they're going to be much happier, and I reckon they're going to want to practice far more. That's not to say that you can't learn to play properly using this instrument. Okay, yes, you can, you know, move one finger up and down the the string, but you can use your fingers properly, you know, one finger per fret rule, and uh, we can develop strumming techniques, which I'll, I'll show you in a while, um, good uh, fretting, putting your finger close to the fret to get the sound pressing hard. So you, you can learn technique with this, okay, like I say, you can bodge up and down with one finger, but if you're uh, an instructor looking at this video, I would urge you to try and teach your pupil to use their fingers properly if possible. If you're a class teacher watching this, uh, you might be able to learn this instrument yourself and use it as a classroom activity. With a, if the school could finance a few of these, it makes a great way to spend 15, 20 minutes in class. And you, and if you didn't have enough for the whole class, you could buy, buy maybe sort of 10 and pass them around. They really are great fun, and hopefully I'll be able to show you that in a moment. I've talked about the advantages of children learning to play on this. Uh, I will talk about a couple of the possible pitfalls First of all, this is a cigar box. On the back, it's got you know a graphic picture of a cigarette end, um, and they often have health warnings on, on them, and perhaps you may think that's not suitable for a child. Although having said that, maybe it's a great reminder to them not to smoke. But maybe a cigar box is not a suitable um, resonator or sound box for one of these guitars. If you're going to use it with children, maybe a tin can is better. Though having said that, a lot of the um, canjos, as, as you call them, you have a bit of a funny angle getting down to the string, so make sure you research that before you buy it. Like I say, I bought a few and I'll, I'll share those with you when I, when I get them in. 
Um, so maybe a plain box is better or a flat tin, you know, choose your instruments wisely. You may get problems with parents if you're using a cigar box that's covered with, uh, you know, smoking kills, warnings, things like that. I mean, if you can get plain boxes, of course, the children could maybe decorate their own boxes. And that's another really good classroom activity, isn't it? On this type of uh, cigar box guitar, the string goes over the body and down to the bridge. With a lot of the canjos, the string disappears inside the, the can or the biscuit tin or whatever they're using it and comes out here. And again, I'm, I can't say for sure as I haven't got one, but that may be a little bit awkward to, to play if you're leaning on the, on the biscuit tin and playing there. I, I quite like this because the string goes over the top of the, the cigar box. Um, I'll let you know, you know when I get uh, one of those in if that's a problem. But, you know, it, it may be, but I, as I said, I can't say for sure at the moment. Another small problem could be that if a child learns to play on this one string guitar and wants to make the jump to a six string, that's quite an extreme jump. Um, but on the other hand, they may get so into this, uh, they may get really sort of carried away and really enthusiastic and might want to explore what happens when you've got six strings to deal with at the same time. So, it, yeah, it could be a good thing. It could work either way. You may also have problems with parents. You know, you say a one string guitar, they might think that's a, a kind of a, a toy or a, you know, a novelty or it won't last. But, you know, trust me as an experienced uh, tutor, I'm absolutely convinced if I could have had a few of these 40 odd years ago when I first started, and even 10 years ago, you know, I could have made, I'm sure I could have made a real success of it. It's a bit late in the day for me now because I'm in my 60s, I'm sort of semi-retired. But you may be watching this thinking, yeah, I could do this. I could get a few of these, take them to school. And if you do, good luck to you. I'm going to do lots of little tutorials, put lots of pieces up, and you're more than welcome to use them for nothing. So let's talk about playing. I talked about the tune, When the Saints Go Marching In. Um, I'm just going to play that in a really sort of basic way to start with. Now, that's a tune we all know, and I picked that one because it uses the open string and the first four frets. So you could see that I was using my four fingers in the four frets, and that's a really good thing to teach uh, a child learning to play. Uh, I did it really basically there, and there is sheet music for this, which I'll give you a link to on the video. Um, but you can move on from there. You could kind of strum the tune like this. Have a listen. And there with a bit of judicious cross-picking, I'm not going to go into the details now because this is sort of a taster video if you like, you know you can really make the tune come alive and of course you can give your student uh, some really good experience at using the plectrum properly in a sort of strumming situation and that makes that fairly dull tune come alive doesn't it using that strumming technique. And the great thing of course because you've only got one string you can't hit any wrong, wrong notes, okay you can play wrong notes with your left hand but the, the right hand you can really afford to sort of go, go fairly crazy with the strumming, you know? Really sort of throw your hand in it, and it's great fun. I mean, even me as a very experienced guitarist, you know, I've got a room surround, I'm surrounded here with very, very expensive, lovely guitars. <laughs> I've just played nothing else since I got this a week ago. Absolutely loving it, and hopefully I'm passing this enthusiasm on to you. Um, you can play tunes that right up and down the guitar. I'll give you a bit of Pop Goes the Weasel. Now obviously that's a pretty tricky tune to play um, for a, a little one, but you can see there's loads of really good practicing that, the, the strumming technique, 
using the fingers, moving the, the, the positions up and down the guitar. And that's something you have to do on a normal guitar as well as on this one string. So that's a, a good little tune to play and I'll provide some music for that in, in due course. Simple tunes like Twinkle Twinkle. See, very, very simple to, to sort of knock out. Um, that one uses the first five frets and not as straightforward as the, when the Saints go marching in, but you know, Charles not going to struggle with that, believe me. I mean, I should say that the main problem I've always had over the years is getting children to practice. And if you're a guitar teacher looking at this, you're probably nodding your head in agreement. Um, I reckon something like this would, you know, the children would really want to practice. They'd want to own one of these, take it home. And as I say, they could, you know, leave it out at home and play it. I reckon they could get you know, really into it and, and would get some good results. Now so far all the tunes I've done have been in the key of G. They've used the open string as the root note, the kind of the home note for the tune. But you can play in other keys as well. Um, if you use the third fret as your root note, in this case that's a C, let's just explore that. Open string is G, first fret is A, second fret is B, third fret is C. Now, if you use that as your root note, you can play tunes that go below the root note and above. If I play a tune like Handsome Molly, which you may or may not know, it's an American kind of folk song, um, I'm going to play it in a sort of simple way, and then I'm going to show you how you can really liven it up with some uh, slurring, some hammering, and some other stuff. So here's the sort of basic tune. simple and notice there's your root note there's your C and the first part be below the first part is below and then it goes above so it goes either side of that root note so it's handy isn't it you can get below and above and then of course with a bit of hammering and slurring and pulling off obviously this is more advanced technique and I will go into this in detail in subsequent videos you can really make it come alive check this out And yeah, I'm a bit over the top there with the, the pulling of the Van Halen uh, job, but you know, you can see, you can turn it into something that's pretty exciting. And if the children, okay, they probably wouldn't be able to manage that, but you can definitely get them interested and excited by showing them things like that and put lots of rhythm and percussive playing into it. So you can do all the normal techniques, the slurring, hammering, pulling off, double pulling off, you know, the really good techniques that can be used. Check out my video that I did of Katie Tunstall's uh, Black Horse and the Cherry Tree. I'll put a, a link to it on this video somewhere or in the description. Have a look at that and that really shows off how you can use the guitar. Now you can use a capo and you might feel, well, why would you bother with a capo? Because nothing's going to really change, but I'll show you why you would do that. Just a normal capo, I'm going to put it behind the third fret. Okay, and now my open string of course is C. Um, now I can do things like change the key, so I'm now in the key of C and I can play something like um, Lavender's Blue. That keeps returning to that C note. Now of course if I didn't have the capo on the third fret I could still play the tune, but of course I'd have to keep fretting that third fret to get that C note. Now it's an open string. And notice how, how I can get the strumming, cross-picking effect there. Down, up, down, up with the plectrum. Good practice.
Now, if you put the capo behind the first fret, you turn the guitar into a, a minor instrument. The scale is a, a minor. In this case, it's A minor. Um, now, that gives you the opportunity to play things like um, Another One Bites the Dust. Give you a, a burst of that. So there's a couple of uses of the capo there. Talking of minor keys, uh, if you want to play something like Drunken Sailor, you could play it in A minor, and you're going to need that open G when it drops that note. I'll show you. Here's a tune that makes use of all the notes in the major scale. One thing I wanted to add is, if you find this instrument too quiet, uh, just get yourself a little pickup. This cost me three ninety nine. Um, I just shove it underneath the string there, plug it into my amp, and it works absolutely fine. It's got a, a peel off sticky bit, which I could stick permanently to the body, but I actually don't want to do that at the moment until I'm absolutely sure I'm going to keep it on there the whole time. These pickups are a great way of uh, making your guitar a bit louder, so the whole class can hear it. Um, I took this to school the other day and the children started clapping along and uh, I was not heard again. So maybe a little cheap, as I say, 3 99 can't go wrong, can you? It's got a socket uh, for your, your jack to jack lead and I've got a little battery operated uh, Roland cube amp which I carry around me. So when I take this into school this week, I shall go armed with this pickup and that will really help. So there we are. I hope you found that interesting. Hopefully I've whetted your appetite for more. Um, like I said, I've got a few other of these instruments coming in in the next few days and I'll, uh, once, once they come in, um, I'll do some videos to show you those. If there's anything you want to know, or any advice you want, then please get in touch with me. Um, watch out for links for music in the description or actually on the video itself. Um, and as you can tell, I'm pretty into this, pretty excited about it. Hope you will be too. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.